we're going to find out. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Still, like, Sunday. Hi guys on Facebook. I'm going to be live on Instagram in a second. Give me a second here. We'll join in. There you are. Hi. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. So good. Yeah. We're so good. And we are going to talk about making yourself wrong for not being further along today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. I just had a private session with a client where that was the exact thing. It's so crazy how that always happens literally because we're talking about, okay, what topic should we discuss? And then I was like, okay, here are a couple things that are pinging me in my world and my client's world. And you're like, yep, that just happened yesterday. <laughs> yep. And I'm, I'm really grateful, by the way, for your ability with words, because there's so many times I'm aware of an energy and then you're like, what about this? And I'm like, that's the thing. So mm, love it. <laughs> <Being brilliant. laughs> what can we create together? Yeah. So, okay. So talk to me about what's up for you in regards to this. Yeah, well, I was just noticing as I was taking a little pause from creation as much on the last week being in Mexico and kind of chilling out a little bit that I was consuming more content and, you know, rather than being inspired by what other people were creating, I was noticing that it was just starting to feel worse and worse and worse. And I was like, well, what is this? And I was starting to get that I was kind of like using their creations as a weapon against me for, well, why aren't you further along? Well, you should be that for long. Well, it only took them a couple months to get there. So it's like, what's wrong with you? And like, wow, it got really intense. And I was like, oh, what is this? Yeah. Well, oh insanity God. is what yeah. it is. And <laughs> well, yeah, it's, and so it's a, it's a big wide open conversation on, and, and we all kind of come into this making ourselves wrong thing from different spaces. Um, like the client that I just had a session with, she's this brilliant woman who's been in business for a really long time and, you know, started buying coaching with me because she couldn't seem to, I guess had gone through a lot of life change and really couldn't seem to like get herself to, start creating again. And so even today she was just really tender, like really, I can't understand why I won't, you know, just do the things that I know I, I should do, which is a little different than what you were saying, but like, I should be further along than this. Like I should be willing to create and able to get to this. And um, you know, when it, we, we, we looked at it a bunch of different ways. And, and one of the things that really showed up was, um, Again, I think with your thing and with this thing, we might have to like bounce through this topic a little okay. bit, but like for her, one of the things that showed up was like, she was using, um, needing to get it right to like, to stop and to not forward herself. And so like every mm -hmm. time she would look at her business and wanting to make a choice, she would go into this incredible like mind trap of like, but then I don't know what to choose or if I should choose, or should I wait to the first of the month or like this incredible amount of conflict and then rendered herself unfunctional, which to me was yeah. like, you know, when we when we started the show, it was like, let's look at what actually doesn't work in terms of creating functionality and what does. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, what would change? How much further along could you be? How much how much more could you further yourself if you were willing to get it wrong? And what was really interesting about where that went for her is that that didn't even seem like a possibility in her world, like. But I, but I'm sure that I will be wrong if I choose. And so I can't choose because I'm definitely going to be wrong. So there was this thing that she'd done where she had made her, what was happening in her mind, the story that would come up in her mind greater than her. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, everything's greater. Like I said, well, have you made like that tape that plays in your mind? Well, you can't do this and you're going to get it wrong. And that those voices that you hear, so to speak, have you made them greater than you? And she was like, well, like, of course they're greater than me. And I was like, oh. And so in her whole life had basically made every single point of view or feeling or thought that would come up in her mind was something that she couldn't overcome. It was like a fact, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things we used with that particular thing, and I get that we'll look at something different with you, but was like, okay, so who and what have you made greater than you? And like everything that is, will you let that go? And and the practice that I gave her was like, literally every single time that you come up to a choice was if I was willing to get this wrong, what would I choose? Like if I was willing to get this wrong, what would I choose? Because she was so practiced in, in stopping herself because she needed to get it right that what was required was this totally different practice of, you know, getting stronger than the whole story that would show up in her head that was was that she was using to not create, but it didn't seem that 
conscious. It wasn't that conscious, yeah. right? Like it was something that was kind of unconsciously controlling her. So yeah. So there's so many different ways of like unsticking yourself. And that's one really dynamic one. So I really relate to what she was going through because I was kind of getting that same where whenever I'm going into, okay, so I'm selling a thing or promoting a program or whatever. And so it's like, there's this very kind of intentionality behind content and working towards that. And then afterwards, what I've noticed this kind of like, okay, now what? Or especially if you go into any sort of expectations of what you think it should do and what it doesn't do and go in that, then you kind of trip yourself up into this whole process of not being able to then almost, it's like being gun shy is kind of how I sense it, like right after, you know what I mean? It's like oh, being less willing to be wrong because of that kind of process. And so I get there's like a couple things under there that I'm that I'm pulling out right now of just like, one, just going into like whatever the expectations, whatever that does, or deciding that, well, because you're creating this thing, then you're focused on like creating this type of content. And now like you got to stick to that type of content versus like totally changing it and doing something else. So I just got yeah. so much under there regarding, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so if we, so, oh my God, that could go so many places with that. Yeah. One of the things that I had to really change in order to continue to create was needing myself to be consistent. Mm. And so there's all these different facets where we'll just get ourselves stuck and like we yeah. can't move on. And the thing that actually gets you further along is just continuing to choose. If you continue to choose, you're going to win. That's it. That's the thing. Like if you don't give up, you you will succeed. That's literally how business works. Will you succeed in the same time frame that you or life? That's actually how living works. <laughs> As long as you don't kill yourself and you just take choose. two more steps and you just choose. <laughs> My gosh, I'm so glad you brought up the consistency thing because I've been seeing so much of that lately as that is the right thing to do. Like, yeah. especially in business or in life is just be consistent, just show up consistently. And that's right. And I was going into like, well, I kind of took this week off and I didn't post as much and I didn't really tell my audience that I wasn't going to post as much or not. I just kind of You're like faded away. I'm so wrong. I'm totally wrong. And I was like, wow, I need to be consistent. I should have planned content ahead of time. And I was like, wait a second. I created yeah. this whole thing. So yeah. would I be willing to just allow it to be what it is? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that it, it, it was to the point where I, yeah, I was trapping it. I was trapping myself. I guess this is really what you guys have to look at is what are you using to trap yourself? That's probably the bigger mm -hmm. question into not choosing. Cause you know, literally if you choose things can't help but grow. Like once you engage things grow, that's it. Um, so it's like, what are you using to trap yourself? So I was using consistency for a while. Like I had to be con consistently on brand, which was a whole universe of judgment needed to be on brand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to be consistent with, you know, showing up on my show every week. I had to be consistent with the things that I had decided I had to be consistent about. And if I wasn't then disaster or, you know, whatever. So, and, and then the other piece of that consistent thing was I also realized that I had built my business around that I would be consistent. I would be consistently providing yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And once I got that, once I saw that, I was like, wow, okay, so what else is possible? And I, I started to actually look at access consciousness as another business model because they do do business and they're very different in the world and they don't do things anyway that anybody tells you they should. And I was mm -hmm. like, what is it about that company in particular that I can't look away from after even 10 years? And what I realized the strength of that was is that they literally build into the business the, the difference that they are, which is that they are never consistent and they always do things different and that things are changing all the time. And I was like, wow, what, what freedom would that give me to be me if I allowed, if I actually built that into the model, for example, if that yeah. was, it was understood that when you come to crystaldroycrawford.com, you know, things are always gonna be different. You just got that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that actually gives me the space to be me, which to me is like the thing that allows things to move forward, no matter what you projected or expected you already should be doing or not, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I was just getting that even with like the way memberships are created and it's like, well, if you buy this year long thing and then it's all of a sudden that felt so heavy for me to like be expected to show up in the same way the entire year or like to have the same content. No, I'm already bored. Like, uh, you know, I need to change it every month or something. You just saying that made me bored. I <laughs> 
But then what we tend to do with that is that we are wrong for getting bored by that, yeah, that that's exactly. the right thing. And we are the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And that's where this conversation with this lady went. It's like, you've got to be willing to be wrong from your point of view. You've got to be willing to choose as you, which you're sure is going to be wrong. If you're choosing it, it's wrong. It's basically like how we function with ourselves. If I'm choosing it, it's going to be wrong. So I've got to go look for somebody else outside of me to tell me how to choose and what to choose and the way to choose in order to be right. Cause from my point of view, I'm wrong. So that's why that's such an yeah. antidote to out creating that, to ask if I was willing to be wrong, what would I choose? Cause you've got to out create your own sureness that you're mm -hmm. wrong in order to get access to movement again. I'm, I want to go back to the, the trapping thing is still yeah, like, okay. there's something there about like, cause as we titled this, like making yourself wrong for not being further along. So it's like, what is the fun like what is the functionality of the trap what is the trap protecting us from from being, being wrong being, from being wrong just being wrong yeah literally it's like right and wrong are the darkest arts on the planet and they are the arts that we are schooled in i'm actually writing a book right now and that's one of the things that i touch on it's like the the lost art of awareness and choice and the dark arts of right and wrong it's like they're yeah. dark arts but that's the thing we're taught as the as the way to function and so yeah when you've got that so ingrained in your system and of course most of us do right from mm -hmm. number one we come in really different so we, we come in super aware and like sensitive and you know caring and these little bundles of like nerve endings almost yeah. you know and then we're trained and we learn like what everybody else is doing and and we're great incredible duplicators so we we duplicate that and most of what everybody's doing is right and wrong and so we try to use that as a way to function and then inevitably get stuck because right and wrong is is all judgment. You have to yeah. judge in order to know what's right and in order to know what's wrong. So judgment just sticks things and sticks things and makes things heavier. And like it that's renders us non-functional. So so the purpose of the trap is to keep you from doing anything wrong, because from your point of view, if you do do something that's you're not sure if it's right, then you are definitely mm -hmm. wrong. And so it's this whole thing we do to like ensure that we are never wrong while secretly believing that we are. So, I mean, you can, there's so many examples <laughs> of that. Like so many ways we do that. Yeah. I mean, I just keep getting on a daily basis, just where the judgment continues to show up really dynamically yeah. and yeah. really kind of like in these like small sneaky ways where I'm like, no, I'm not a judgment with this. And I'm like, but why does it not feel good? Because I'm probably functioning from some sort of judgment still, because I get that it just it constantly activates our nervous system every time that we go into it. And then we're really just not congruent with who we truly be. Cause I get the sense of when we can just line up with that, Life feels good. Life is easy. Yeah, we just flow, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and I want to add to that because the other thing I'm getting really aware of, and even in this conversation in my session today, was that we also just have never really asked ourselves what we would choose if we weren't doing right or wrong. We've never mm -hmm. even asked ourselves that question, and nobody else has either. So it's like we actually are not practiced in choosing as ourselves because, number one, you as you don't feel like anything by the way so like when you're truly yeah. being yourself it doesn't feel like anything it doesn't look like anything it's not defined because you are not a defined being you're an infinite being so it only is when you're not being you that it feels like something when you're not being you you have feelings when you're being you it doesn't feel like anything so so like we're so accustomed to choosing from the reference points of things which is right and wrong it's like you can reference um, what somebody else has done and then do things based on that or not based yeah. on that. You can reference what you've decided is right and, you know, and, and choose based on that or not based on that. But we place or we've been taught to put in place or, or have reference points for choosing. But as you, you don't have any reference points for choice. You just choose. And that's the thing we don't, we have not practiced. We don't even know. So like, as I was having this session today with this lady, I was like, when you ask if I were willing to do this wrong, what would I choose? She's like, it's just blank. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. have you ever asked yourself that question? I said, mm -hmm. so your homework for the next month is literally for every choice to ask yourself that question and just let be patient with you. Let it be blank. Cause it will be for a while. There's nothing there yet. Like you're like, uh, yeah. I'm so used to referencing what's right and wrong that I don't even know what I would choose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. 
and that's where all the like kind of comparison stuff comes up because I, I just even was thinking about even as a kid like in dance classes I was always trying to like mimic what were other people doing that was right like I didn't want to improv I wanted to mimic others and I was like the ultimate mimicker. I just always was like tell me what to do and I'll do it tell me what to do and I'll do it and I functioned from that way for so long that when I get out of it it is almost that space of what she's describing like well, well what, what do I choose? You like, don't, I don't know. Even, you there's don't no, know. Re yeah, no reference point. You actually don't know. And so the, the way to stimulate the awareness of what you would choose is to start asking a question. That's mm -hmm. how you stimulate it. And you really do have to be patient with yourself because as you ask that question, you're still not going to know for a while. <laughs> you're like, yeah. Where's the answer? Where's the right <laughs> cautious answer? Yeah. So it's, it's like, it is like, and it might actually be that somewhere in the, our existence as a being, we actually buried so deep what we would choose in favor of what everyone else would choose so that we could get here, you know, so that, yeah. and I think there's a lot to that from a consciousness conversation point of view and not as essential to know the logistics as much as it is to get that you really haven't ever asked yourself that. And when you start to, that that will start to stimulate it and, and it will start to show up because what you would choose does exist. Yeah, It's just, have you asked yourself about it yet? So I think that's a huge, huge, huge piece of the conversation. And I, there's also this other really interesting piece that I think is worth talking about that you will know something about. And that is like the, the comparison part and like the I guess the comparison part, but also like the projections and the expectations that we do of what we've decided should be showing up now. Mm -hmm. And like, how do we navigate that? <laughs> yeah, that's so great. You just brought that up because I was thinking about the further along piece and like yeah. whatever that, and I'm like, what does that even mean? Is that even real? What does that mean? What have you projected and expected should be occurring right now? Yeah, I should be further along. I'm like, then what? what? would that be like yeah if i was further along what do i mean by that and because even when i am there then it's like but there'll be, be more else. there'll be more yeah so isn't that fun it's just never ending i know but okay so here's some things that i think are great to know about you the me too All is my middle name is more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i am literally being satisfied literally for for people like us is not or it's not something that will ever occur yeah. you are never satisfied again that's something we've made wrong about us because mm -hmm. we seem to see mm -hmm. other people around us that are satisfied why and i remember walking around my life and this is pre-access consciousness but i literally remember thinking why can't i be happy like everybody else seems to be happy mm -hmm. um i you know, I was living at the time I was married and we were living in this really beautiful small town. We had beautiful friends. We had money. We had food. We had all the things. And everybody else seemed to be really happy with like, you know, barbecues on Sunday and family events and like the really normal nurturing, normal stuff, you know. And yeah. I was constantly aching for more, but I, I'd made it so wrong that I would ache, but then judge myself for it and then, you know, try to do normal again. And I was... Gratitude dying yes it's like why, why can't i be grateful i'm broken i'm broken yes. Yes. but literally to the point where i was suicidal like i was yeah. so sure that i was broken so when i got introduced to the conversations in access and started to get that i'm not broken i'm just incredibly different and that one of the things that's different about me is that my middle name is more i was like oh what's light is true without this like, big exhale that i'm you know, like, oh, I'm just different. Okay, cool. Like, I'm never satisfied. And that's one of the yeah. greatnesses of me. That's actually, you know, if you look at all the big creations in the world, the creators, the Edisons, the Einsteins, the, their middle name was more. Mm -hmm. That's how we've gotten our big advancements in anything. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I just saw like your body shift from the way you were talking about it from when you were like, I'm wrong, and I'm not doing enough, and I need to practice gratitude. And then you're like, wait, I can just be me. And I was just like, almost in that instant, I could see like the healing happen in your body. It's you know, a, it's like when you can relax, then your body can heal and repair and be, and it's like joyful, feeling good state. That's why I say constantly, I got this from Shannon O'Hara, that, that healing is a side effect of consciousness. Consciousness is the acknowledgement yeah. of what is. And so much of access has been that for me of like, oh, oh, what, what I was believing was I'm wrong, which was heavy. What is, is just mm -hmm. light. I'm different, you know? And so the healing emerges from that because then you can just function. You, you don't expect yourself anymore to be the same. 
And so I guess partnered with that was like, okay, so I'm different. What I'm creating in the world is different. Even if I don't have the words for it, it's definitely different. Will it create in this, in any, to anything that I can reference here, like, like time frames, et cetera. Can yeah. I actually use anything that's already in existence to reference what I'm creating and how long I think it should take? No, and and for what purpose? Like, what does it create? To judge myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, to you make know, sure that I'm always right. wrong and in my place. You know, right? Because it's just like, then how? Uh, I'm like, well, how do I function without the reference points? You know, that's kind of where I go into versus just kind of like swirling off and just going with the flow. Yet it's so much easier on the body. But yet, God, it's just this. Like, I'm so aware of it currently. I guess in my world, but yet. It's almost like I see it, yeah, I can't stop choosing it kind of thing. Or it's just a, like, cause it's so familiar. So what is the part of it for you that you seem addicted to choosing just for fun? Oh God, I'm so, so addicted to seeing what is the next step of where I should be or like where I'm going to, to try to figure it out. I need to figure okay. it out. I need to understand what it In is. In order to what? To be right, to be. For what purpose? that right there. With I, that. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. It's like, then I'll feel like I'm winning or like I'm good enough or something. I mean, it definitely elicits some like deep worth yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so guys listening, like what uh, you can do with this is one, ask yourself those questions that we just did and then go, okay, so all the points of view that I'm avoiding or defending that keep this in existence, destroy and create them all right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine shorts, boys, poets, and beyond. So that's from accesses like toolbox. That's what yeah. I've been really doing with these things because there are these things that we just continue to choose. And even though we can see that choosing them is not creating more, we seem to not be able to stop choosing them. Exactly. And this is where I think the tools of access are just like bar none in terms of you don't have to understand why you're doing, you can't anyway understand why you're doing it, by the way. You just get that you're doing it and you can start to unravel the unconsciousness from which you're doing it. Because if you are, if you see that something's not working and you keep choosing it, there's some unconscious thing going on. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the tools of access are so powerful because you don't have to have any cognition about it. You just have to get that it's going on and go, well, never mind. <laughs> <We're wrong. laughs> yeah, because even right now, as you're like poking at the energy, I'm just like, well, what is it? I don't even know if I have words to it. And so I love that and being able to use the tools because it's like how yeah do you consciously figure it out what it is well you can't anyway i think that's yeah. important to get it it's not not only even that you don't need to you cannot yeah it's yeah. insane and everything that we're it's literally literally yeah. everything that we're doing that is rendering us non-functional is coming from our insane mind insane mind mm -hmm. Our being is very natural so like if you look at infinite being as a not just a concept but like as a if you are an infinite being, you have infinite choice, infinite possibility, everything's possible. If you were functioning as an infinite being, you would just choose and play and go and write whatever. But we, yeah. we've are, we've trained ourselves to do these dark arts, right? <laughs> we've, we've been very well trained. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so we're, so, so a lot of what we are coming up against when in this creating thing is, are the are the limitations that we've bought into and that we've made real and that we keep trying to like go around but but can't seem to you know mm -hmm. and so they're coming from the insane mind which is why i think the access tools are so powerful because they deal with it as an energy you don't have to you can't understand it you started choosing it at some point because it was valuable yeah. you're still choosing it okay never mind all the points of view that i'm avoiding and defending that keep it in existence right wrong good bad 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 online shirts boys poets and beyonds that's it no. well and that is the huge missing piece i sense within psychology since kind of also we started this whole thing yeah. with true mental health too right and we've gone a million different this? directions <laughs> just everything because that's all part of your mental health and it's like that piece of addressing the energy or yeah. like just a, a, and allowing us to clear it without needing to understand it right psychology is all about like let's understand it yeah, what is the limiting yeah, yeah. belief and what's sticking you because then once you know it then you can get past it and it's just like what if you could just and clear even it what you just said though there's like there's some that's true and then some that's that sticks it in place so right it's like looking right. at the limiting belief is like really helpful needing words for it not always helpful sometimes yeah. 
Yeah. So if you get that limiting beliefs are our energy bodies, limiting beliefs are energy bodies, and you start to deal with them as energy bodies, then you just have more ease because then you don't need all the cognition. I think a lot of what we've been taught in mental health is that we, we need to have the cognition in order to change something, which that's mm -hmm. part that's not true because our yeah. first language is energy. And so we just have, but we haven't been trained as energetic beings. We've been trained as yeah. finite thinking beings. And so we keep trying to change things from there, which is why it doesn't work. Um, so yeah, so it's like in handling what's coming up for you, if you handle it as an energy, then you just have a faster time of it because then you you eliminate the slowness of thinking and cognition. Mm -hmm. Say bye bye. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how far we got on the projections and expectations thing, but it's like because <laughs> that's like a whole show in itself. I mean, like well, or multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, even with you, like when you and I talk, I'm like, who are you comparing yourself to? You know. Yeah, who are you yeah. Basing your projections and expectations on because you would have to be using a reference point to compare yourself against in order to find judgment of you. Yeah, totally. And so it's like whoever's online or whatever. And yet it's like comparing apples to oranges, right? Because it's like, there is no, which is all the logic. We're like, yeah, but it's like comparing apples to oranges. And I'm just <laughs> trying to talk. Really like, so I'm still going to do it because you know, it's what I know. <laughs> best and it's right, like, I mean, who are me? are to yeah, I'm so yeah. Right. But you are, well, okay, yeah, so not right. You're actually correct. It is comparing apples to oranges. But the thing that really shifts that need to compare yourself is when you truly get that. Yeah. Oh, e e mm, mm, mm. that, right? Because I think we've kind of said this in multiple different ways, maybe today, but just the whole thing is like cognitively, you can like see it, you can get it. God but if you don't get it in your body. But if you don't get it, if you don't actually get it, how different yeah. you are, yeah. you will think that there's other people out there doing greater things than you. And that's the part that's not true because there is no one like you. There's yeah. nobody like you. There's nobody creating what you're creating. Like there's nobody out there doing a show like this one, mm -hmm. you know, like there's, so we don't have a reference point for this show, which we yeah. really acknowledged when we first started it. And yet that kind of keeps growing in trueness, right? Like, so where do we start? Well, we just start. And we just commit to show up most weeks, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and fumble around and see what comes out. <laughs> should we be further along? It's like, then what? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And that, that's just, oh uh, gosh. And it's kind of like when I, God, I was doing so many access, access classes in a row, like last year. And I was like hearing some of the same things over and over again. And yet, they would just land differently, yeah. you know, kind of at different times. So I was like, wow, I like literally just heard that, like <laughs> actually heard that, you know what I mean? I'm like, I heard it, but I didn't really hear it. You know, like we're just, I got it a different level. Just Yeah. yeah. I, one of the words I love to use for that is grokking. It's from oh, yeah, this yeah. Robert Highland's A Stranger in a Strange Land book, but it's this alien who came to this planet and didn't understand talking because they don't talk, they grok, you know, they like mm -hmm. just Tele telepathically communicate and they you just grok things you don't have them as cognition is not a valuable product yeah. but on this planet cognition is the only valuable product according mm -hmm. to most of the people you talk to and so but the thing that really changes it is when you really grok it like you get it you're like mm -hmm. oh my gosh like wow i'm so different and so i would compare myself so really in truth the only person you can compete with is yourself <laughs> mm -hmm. And even that, <laughs> like how, and so the question really is like, how can I out create myself today? And yeah. I guess sometimes for me, it's like more entertaining to compare myself because then I have, you know, entertain, entertain. <laughs> I'm bored, so maybe I'll shame myself. Maybe I'll just make myself wrong today. <laughs> that sounds like, don't have enough going on, right? I, mean, I don't have going on. I need to handle like 82 things and puck and puck myself and like, you know. It's so true though, because it's any time that I'm not creating a, a lot or I'm not, you know, actually doing that, but then there's too much space to then go into comparison mode. We're so that's super fun. Oh. creators. And so if we don't obsessively compulsively create the future, we're going to obsessively compulsively create crap. Yeah. And some <laughs> of us have like immense capacities for creation that mm -hmm. literally like a two-year-old that you don't give enough toys to mm -hmm. will just will just ruin the house basically mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you know, like a puppy, like a Labrador. Yeah. Well, I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just like my mom always had us in activities to make sure to keep us out of trouble. Right. And so it was like the same idea of like keeping busy creation of something so that you're not busy. What? Shaming yourself, beating yourself up, doing all those. Yeah. Because we all know that's fun. <laughs> And so I'm not speaking as someone who never does it because I do, but what's changed a lot is that I now catch myself doing it. And I'm like, are you bored? Do you need something to do? Bored. <laughs> I don't want to create that other thing. Cause that other thing, I don't know exactly what I'm doing and I'd have to face being wrong. So instead of doing that, I'm going to come over here and like create trauma in my relationship. That's your wrong. Oh my God. You have your own private telenovelas. <laughs> But I do get there's so many other, you know, we could talk about that for a long time because that really is what we do. But yeah, holy crap. Yeah. Um, These conversations are so helpful for me personally. I'm like so selfish about this because it's like I get something at a different level each time. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, okay. I just heard that a little bit more, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess there's just so many different takeaways from this. I don't know if I can summarize them, but I, you know, for you guys. (laughs) For you guys watching, maybe go back through and kind of pull out the questions because it really is starting to get that there is nobody like you, so you cannot reference. And I don't mean that like kumbaya, you're (laughs) unique, feel good about yourself bullshit. I mean like truly you are unique, one of a kind snowflake material. Like Mm -hmm. there's never one snowflake like another one. So to reference any other snowflakes, (laughs) it's not wise. Mm -hmm. Um, And that if you don't get why you're choosing something, you really can use that tool from access to just shake it up, chop yeah. up the unconsciousness and get more access to choice. And, and that really and truly asking yourself a different question, like if I were willing to get this wrong, what would I choose? We'll tap you into you. And if you're patient with yourself and persistent with that question, you will start to get things that emerge from it. Well, that's well, my... Yeah, no, I love that. And I was just starting to get like, and if I was willing to not need to create based on what I did yesterday or last week and that I could just choose again. Yeah. Like I need to repeat because I was just like, what would would be fun for me to choose now? It doesn't have to look like anything I've ever chosen. I can just create something totally different. And what if it wasn't even be off brand? Well, that's the whole thing. Because, right, it's like, oh, wait, your audience needs to expect what's coming next. And it's like, no, either they can, you know, it's going to resonate with them or not. And that's cool. You know what I mean? But then you're following you and congruent with you. And that's just a lesson every day that I'm learning. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So if you guys would like more with me in particular, I have a business done different class coming on Friday. So it's a four day master class that is all access consciousness and tools and fucking amazing. And you also leave with this huge manual of tools to use with business and money. Oh my God. Mm. And then I see your, what else is going on for you? What else? Well, EFC has started. So we're rolling. That's awesome. I have my membership going right now, which is more focused on like the energetics of trauma, healing from that. And we are really looking at a lot of the stuff. Like what are we telling ourselves? Where's our attention? How much judgment are we doing? Because that to me is like really at the root root of physical and mental illness. So um, if you're wanting more support with that, I'd love to have you join. Yeah, and you guys can always also go to infinitebeingschool.com for Mm -hmm. like a beautiful introductory course to the tools of access consciousness and a 30-day self-guided challenge and a community and everything. So that's there for you too as a gift. Um, So lots to choose from. We're gonna have to create some things. Someday we're gonna create some things for you guys to come play with us on. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you you next time. See you next time. Bye.